Uh, good, uh, good morning, everyone. I want to start by saying how grateful I am to be back at the House Financial Services Committee. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, that, bl that brief so sojourn did not, um, did not make me envious of other people's tasks. Maybe more grateful for the, being able to deal with you and work with you on both sides of the aisle. Um, and so nice to be back. And uh, as we sit here today, uh, we know what's going on in the world. Uh, we hear that clearly. Uh, I think we have alignment, uh, generally speaking, and, and acknowledge that the world's on fire and we need U.S. leadership. Our allies are questioning our commitment to the rules-based international system uh, that we have been so constructive in uh, building with our allies um, in, the last, um, in the last 50 years. On October 7th, Iranian-backed Hamas terrorists launched a barbaric and unjustified attack against Israeli civilians. In the worst assault on Jews since the Holocaust, we saw families brutally slaughtered, entire communities decimated, and disgusting acts of violence carried out against the most vulnerable. We know all of this is true because we've seen the horrific images and videos from that day. Undeniable proof of Hamas's anti-Semitic terror campaign. We're also all aware of Ukraine's ongoing fight against Putin's unjustified invasion. These conflicts have not occurred in a vacuum. They are interconnected. A new axis of evil is on the rise, and as the leader of the free world, it's the United States' duty to confront it. Russia, Iran, and the Chinese Communist Party are growing closer, threatening global stability. The crux of this emerging partnership centers around the trade of oil and energy, as well as illicit finance networks that allow these rogue actors to circumvent sanctions. So today, our committee will stand with our ally, uh, our Israeli allies, as, as we work to further isolate Iran and its proxies from the global financial system. This is just the most recent step in our committee's work. Last month, we held subcommittee hearings to examine Hamas's financing and the role of Iran. Just last week, we had a bipartisan classified session with Deputy Secretary Adiamo to better understand the nature of these ongoing global wars. I would concur that the administration has done an admirable task of, of rising to this occasion. The legislation we'll consider today builds on these ongoing efforts. We'll mark up Congressman Lawler's Iran-China Energy Sanctions Act of 2023 to target Iranian oil revenue one of their primary sources of funding used to finance terrorism around the globe. H.R. 6000 and H.R. 5945, introduced by Representatives Nunn and Muser, respond to reports that the Biden administration eased Iran's ability to access $6 billion in humanitarian assistance. We'll also consider H.R. 5921, introduced by Mr. Heisinga, that would prohibit the Treasury Secretary from issuing any licenses authorizing a U.S. financial institution to engage in transactions for trade with Iran other than food, medicine, and medical devices benefiting Iranian civilians. This conforms to the stated policy of the, of the administration. That bill also requires the Secretary to oppose International Monet Monetary Fund assistance to Iran, to ensure the IMF and to ensure the IMF member companies do not exchange special drawing rights held by Iran. It also prohibits the Export Import Bank from providing assistance involving the Iranian government or any entity owned or controlled by the government. HR 6245, a, bi a bipartisan bill introduced by Representatives Hill and Vargas, requires the president to report on the assets of certain Iranian government officials and terrorist leaders while also providing for the publication of those assets. We did this in response to Russia and Russian oligarchs as well. We'll also consider Congressman Luca Meyer's H.R. 6015, which requires the president to prescribe regulations ensuring humanitarian exemptions involving Iran sanctions and ensuring they do not facilitate acts of international terrorism, transactions with uh, sanctions persons, or the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. These are just a handful of bills on today's agenda. It's my expectation we'll move all of them to the floor expeditiously. As today's geopolitical landscape grows ever more precarious, it's our responsibility to put forth thoughtful policy to protect our national security and support our allies. 
I believe all these bills we will advance today meet this goal and complement the efforts of our colleagues across Congress. As I've said before, we hear a lot of tough talk in Washington, but it's the Financial Services Committee that continues to walk the walk. Finally, today, I hope we can focus on our work here in the Financial Services Committee. We all agree we should pass a supplemental uh, appropriations bill and keep the government open. Those two things are very important. Helping uh, with our national security efforts and international aid uh, is very important. And I support the package that is being contemplated in the Senate. I also support keeping the government open. But we're uh, legislating in this committee specific to our committee. And we should use today's markup to advance sound policy, not as a platform for partisan talking points. And I look forward to a robust discussion and debate today. Uh, and I yield back.